Good morning, everyone. And uh, Happy New Year to everyone. What a great way to start our new year with baptism as well this, uh, this Sunday. And uh, I'm so excited to baptize Kate and Brenda. Uh, ignore that text message um, because I didn't see you this morning and I was starting to get worried. So I, I see you here now, so it's going to be great. Looking forward to um, going down to the beach later on. Um, so this morning I thought I'd uh, have another break from our series on John and talk a little bit about baptism and um, and talk about what baptism is and a little bit of the origins of baptism for, for us as Christians. Um, and going with this theme of new beginnings as we're going into new year, um, baptism is also symbolic of a new beginning in our lives. Let me see if I can get this going. I've got this thing, but it's, ah, oh, here we go. It's going. So baptism is about new beginnings. The Christian life is about new life, isn't it? The new life that Christ gives us. And our roots of our faith and the new life that Christ gives us is found when we place our faith in Jesus. That's why baptism is about the beginning of a new life. It marks the beginning of a new life. The practice of baptism by immersion in water is a universal practice of believers in Christ done all over the world ever since the church was first birthed at Pentecost over 2,000 years ago. Now the history of baptism and the practice of baptism actually originates before Christ himself. Jesus himself went through water baptism, as we know, with John the Baptist. The Jews practiced this act of baptism for various reasons, for, for spiritual reasons. It was also a common practice by a group called the Essenes, which was a Jewish sect as well, and they commonly practiced baptism. There's other practices of this ceremonial washing and ritual washing that was often done by pilgrims, uh, priests who would have this uh, ritual cleansing before they would enter into the temple to do their uh, spiritual duties at the temple. And washing of, uh, you know, washing in water by immersion or just a, a sort of a ritual washing practice was symbolic of repentance. It was symbolic of washing away of sins and symbolic of turning back to God, a, a commitment or a recommitment of your heart to God. And that's what these acts often meant. Jesus' baptism is a little bit different. He is obviously without sin. The Bible says Jesus was without sin, but took on our sins, and he became sin for us. So when Jesus got baptized, he wasn't getting baptized to, be, to wash away his sins, but he was identifying himself with the people he was with, with the Jewish community with, he was with, and also, it also marked the beginning of his ministry as well. It marked the beginning of his uh, spiritual ministry, his priestly act of dying for our sins. But Christian baptism is all of this and more. The first Christian baptism actually wasn't water baptism. It was a baptism by God himself pouring his Holy Spirit onto the believers. And this baptism by God is done by God to all believers, for all believers. The pouring of God's Holy Spirit onto all believers in Christ. In Acts chapter 1 verse 4, 
Jesus promised all the believers, anyone who would put their faith in him, that they would be baptized by the Holy Spirit, a pouring of God's Spirit into our lives. And as you read Acts chapter 1 and, and chapter 2, you see that the believers, this is after Jesus has risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, the believers are now left on their own without Jesus. And they're all gathered in this house. And this was the birth of the new church. This is where, as the believers are gathered together and they're praying together, the Holy Spirit is poured onto all the believers. And as the public observed what was going on, as the Holy Spirit was poured on the believers, they all started speaking in different tongues, different languages. And remember, this was a time of Passover in Jerusalem. So there were people from all over the surrounding nations visiting Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, and they all speak different languages. And as people were watching the first believers in this house, they saw and heard, you know, the Holy Spirit moving through this place. They said there was, it was like tongues of fire was above them. And the sound of wind rushing through this place. And as people started speaking in different languages, the foreigners who were there could understand what was happening. And this caused a bit of confusion for them. And they were wondering, what is going on? Are these guys drunk or something? And Peter, who was the leader at the time, got up and started to speak. And he started to explain to the people what was happening. And Peter explained to them what what is happening here is an act of God. It was prophesied by God as well that he would pour his Holy Spirit. And he starts telling them about what they just did to Jesus not long ago. Many of the people who were watching, the crowd that was watching, were actually probably involved in condemning Jesus' death. There's about 3,000 of them watching. 120 people have just been baptized by the Holy Spirit. And 3,000 people are watching. And as Peter starts explaining to them what is going on, they are convicted and they are cut to the heart about what is just going on. That Jesus was condemned and crucified and now he's alive and risen and ascended to heaven. And now these people who are watching are suddenly convicted by what they've just done and what they are witnessing here, that this is all real. And they ask Peter, what should we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized and you will receive the Holy Spirit. And that day, 3,000 Jews repented and were baptized by immersion in water. So baptism is also symbolic of the new life. It's a symbolic also of the death of the old life. That's why we say it's new life, because there is a death of your old life and the birth of a new life. And Christian baptism, what makes it different from the Jewish baptisms, at, you know, of ritual cleansing, is that we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And when we are baptized, it is a symbolic washing. Remember, it's symbolic. It's not, the water doesn't wash away your sins. I wish it was that easy, but it doesn't work that way. Water is symbolic of what Christ has done. As we just shared in communion, his blood is atoning for our sins. His blood washes away our sins and gives us new life. And as we just read in Romans chapter 6, that we are identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. 
So, Brenda and Kate, when you are baptized today, when you go under the water, that immersion symbolizes the death of your old life. It is the death that Christ died on the cross. You are dying with Christ when you're going underwater. And your old life is dead and buried. Jesus took on the punishment of your sins and the consequences of our sins. That is death. Jesus takes that on himself. He paid the ransom for our lives. And as you come out of the water, that represents new life. As Jesus was resurrected, as he conquered death, rose out of the grave, never to enter the grave again, never to die again, rising into eternal life, he gives us that same life. You will die one day, but if you believe in Christ, you will rise again. You have eternal life already. So when you come out of the water, that's what it represents. When you're coming out of the water, you are a new person. You are a new being, a new creation in Christ. That's what we are, a new creation in Christ. We are counted as children of God, adopted into his family through Christ. Now, this salvation process, the forgiveness of sins, the dying of sins, the paying the ransom for our sins, that salvation transaction happens in a spiritual sense, and that exchange is actually seen in your baptism. That's a, what we see visibly is what happened invisibly. Okay? And the Apostle Peter, as he talks to the church and talks about what Christ did, he says that Jesus suffered for our sins once and for all time. He never sinned but died for sinners to bring us safely home to God. Peter also talked about Jesus going into the depths of the grave when he died and setting prisoners free from the grave. He talks about the early days of Noah when God flooded the earth and wiped out all of mankind except for Noah and his family. Everyone died in that flood. And that he, he talks about that as being like a baptism. As the water washed over the earth, it cleansed the earth of all the sin and the filth in the earth. There's also a mark of a judgment that is about to come on the earth once more. As Christ is going to come and judge the earth and cleanse it of all sin. That water baptism of the earth in Noah's day was symbolic of what Jesus is doing for us as well. As the water washes over the earth and cleanses the earth of evil, people are set free by Christ. Christ goes into the grave and rescues those people from the dead as well. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, he says this, and that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The other thing I want to say is baptism follows our response to Jesus and our response to the salvation we receive in Christ. In the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, Jesus instructs us to go out into the world, spread the good news, make disciples, and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And anyone who believes should be baptized. And baptism is a mark of our salvation. It is the mark of a new beginning in our lives. 
When you read the accounts of Christian baptism in the New Testament, you'll find biblically there is no delay from conversion to baptism. When you give your heart to the Lord, you should get baptized immediately or very soon. Don't delay it. Like some people delay their baptism <clears throat> until they feel they're ready to get baptized. But the point of baptism is an immediate act of obedience to the conviction of the truth. It's not about how you feel at the time. It's an act of obedience. It's not about feel like waiting till you feel it's right. Because if you start building your faith on how you feel all the time, you're going to be up and down like a yo-yo all the time. Baptism is simply just an act and a response to the conviction of that truth in Christ. If you believe in Christ, don't waste another day. Just get baptized because that is an act of obedience. In Acts chapter 9, when the famous apostle Paul got converted, he went from persecuting Christians, putting them in prison, and approving the stoning of Stephen and, and other Christians. He had blood on his hands, and he was still on his way to arrest more Christians. On the road to Damascus, Jesus appears to Paul, at the time he was known as Saul, and blinds him. Blinds him because Paul is spiritually blind. He may have great passion for God, but he's still spiritually blind and he cannot see the work of Christ. And then Paul ends up in this house and he's, then God speaks to another believer named Ananias and sends him to Paul to go and pray for him. And God tells Ananias, I've got a special task for this guy, Paul. And when Ananias goes and prays for Paul, the scales literally fall off his eyes. And for the first time in his life, he sees things spiritually. He sees the truth. And Paul doesn't waste any time. He gets baptized. He doesn't wait till he feels right and works out his theology on baptism. He just gets baptized because of the conviction in his heart. There's no delay between belief and baptism. In Acts chapter 8, the apostle Philip leads an Ethiopian along the road. He leads him to Christ, explains the scriptures to him, and the Ethiopian gives his life to Christ. And while they're traveling along the road, they come across some water. And he says, why can't I be baptized? Let's get baptized. Straight away, it's immediate. There's another account of Cornelius, the first Gentile to get a converted and his family. As, as Peter is, is sharing the gospel with Cornelius and his family, the Holy Spirit interrupts the meeting and they all get filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter just sees what is happening because up till that point, they were only thinking only Jews are coming to Christ. And then all of a sudden, it shows the kingdom of God is now starting to break out into the world, outside of just the Jewish community, outside of Israel. And Cornelius and his family received the Holy Spirit without actually accepting Christ as their Lord and Savior, might I add. The Holy Spirit just rushes in. And they give their lives to the Lord. And Peter says, can we, up till that point, only Jews were getting baptized. And Peter says, you know, this is something God is doing. Can we stop this from happening? No. So he baptizes Cornelius and his family. And that's how the gospel breaks out into the Gentile world. And that's how it has come to us here in Australia 2,000 years later. God's Spirit continually breaking new ground and breaking into people's lives and hearts. The last thing I want to say before I finish is that baptism is a testimony, a public testimony to Jesus 
as Lord of our lives. When you guys get baptized, and anyone else, everyone here who has been baptized, when you get baptized, you are making a very bold statement publicly. Let me tell you, in some countries, you can get in prison for what you're about to do today. In some countries, you can get stoned and put to death for what you're about to do today. Because baptism is a public declaration that says Jesus Christ is Lord over all else. And that's what we are proclaiming when we are doing a public bap baptism. We are saying that Jesus is Lord. What we are saying is our allegiance is to God first. Our allegiance is to Jesus Christ first and foremost, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who is God in the flesh. Baptism is a revolutionary action. Make no mistake about it. Before your country, before your flag, before your government, before dictators, before your friends, before your enemies, before your boss, we say Jesus comes first in our lives. And we will live a life that will reflect our obedience to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We put God first in our lives. And that's what we're saying when we're doing a baptism publicly. Baptism marks a new beginning, new life, and a new kingdom opening up and unfolding in our lives. The believers and citizens of the kingdom of God are living now in a world of two kingdoms. You're living in the kingdom of God and you're living in the kingdom of this earth. You're living under the, the government of Australia, if you like, and all its beliefs, Australian cultural beliefs. You're living in that world, but you're also living in the kingdom of God. And as we get baptized and we make that public declaration, we are saying the kingdom of God comes first in our lives. Our allegiance, our obedience, is first of all to God. Our loyalty is to Christ first and foremost. So I'm looking forward to baptizing you guys later on today. And as we gather down at the beach, uh, Doris is going to also sing us a few songs as well. So when you get there, sing loud, sing proud, and don't be afraid of all the people watching because that's a testimony to Christ. Okay. And we're going to celebrate the death of the old person and the birth of new life that Christ gives us. Let's pray. Now, Father God, we just thank you for this very special morning. And how special is it, Lord, to start the new year with new beginnings spiritually as well for Brenda and Kate. Lord, we pray that you would bless them, and I pray that today will be uh, a real marker for their life journey and it's a day they can always look back to and know for sure 100 percent lord that you revealed yourself to them and they responded to the good news we have in christ lord i pray that you also bless them and fill them with your holy spirit and strengthen them both in their faith I pray you also protect them as the enemy will always attack, but especially in times like this, the enemy will attack. So, Father, we pray for your hand to be over them. We pray for your protection to be over them, Lord God. And as we go to the beach later on today, Father, I pray that your name will be glorified there on a beautiful beach where everyone's having their holiday, that we could testify to the work that you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
wanted to finish our service today with a reading from Galatians chapter 3. And Paul says this, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and, God, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you May his face shine upon you. May he bless your family and your loved ones. Enjoy the new life that Jesus gives us all. Live in his grace and mercy. Hold fast onto your faith. Do not waver to the left or the right. May the Lord's steadfast love and tender mercy surround you. Always remember that the Lord has redeemed you. He has saved us and forgiven us. You have received a new life. Do not go back to the old dead life. Put on Christ daily and live the life that God has planned for you. May God bless you and have a great week.